Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Red Lessons and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it and I hope that this video finds you well. In today's episode, we're going to be doing a comparison between the 2011 version of Dior Um Intense by Christian Dior and also the 2020 version which just came out this year. I'm excited to tell you about my thoughts on whether or not I pick up on any differences between the two, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my comparison of the 2011 version of Dior Homme Intense and also the 2020 version of Dior Homme Intense, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, if you like comparison videos just like this, but also giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and pretty much anything having to do with fragrances, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner, and of course, while you're at it, please make sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell. This way, whenever I do put out these videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. So let's talk about the evolution of Christian Dior, if we may, for a second. So you have the original Dior Um, which was the first sort of mainstream commercial use of the note of iris in a men's fragrance. And so you think of the iris, a lot of people think of waxy, lipsticky, metrosexual. It's a floral ingredient after all, but it's one that many men appreciated. They bought it, they love it, they wear it. In this fragrance here, we have a sweeter version of the original Dior Homme. So we had Dior Homme, Dior Homme Cologne, Dior Homme Intense, Dior Homme Parfum. There have been so many flankers to the Dior Homme line and for good reason. And of course, in 2020, they reformulated or they created a brand new version, I should say, of the original Dior Homme that smells quite different. They took the iris out. It's a completely different fragrance. So here we have Dior Homme Intense where in one of the note breakdowns, I remember reading vanilla and amber, and then that sweetness was attributed to musk mallow, otherwise known as ambrette, with also a touch of pear and this sort of agrestic opening of lavender. But you definitely did get sweeter when you went from the original Dior Homme to Dior Homme Intense. So the very first Dior Homme Intense came out in 2007. I can't believe it's been 13 years. And then a few years later in 2011, they reformulated. It. So the perfumer is Francois Damachy, who is the in-house perfumer for Christian Dior. And now nine years after the 2011 version, we're in the year 2020. And then we have the brand new version of Dior Homme Intense. And this one I actually purchased when I was at Duty Free. I purchased all of them, by the way. And so I don't have the 2007. I do apologize for that. Although I have tried it and it's an amazing fragrance, right? I'm personally a huge fan of Dior Homme Intense. I think it's a great date night sort of a fragrance. It takes that irisy floral thing that's going on in the original and it adds this overtone of sweetness that I think makes it a little bit more inviting and sensual. So what do we get from the 2011 version? So it opens up very sweet, very resinous. I, I can't say that I purchased this one in 2011 when it first came out. I purchased it a few years later and I do apologize for not having a batch code to show you. I know there are a lot of people that rely solely on batch codes and I think that that's a good thing, right? To know what exactly is coming from this particular fragrance relative to the batch that is assigned to it. And I perfectly agree. I think that that is a really good model to follow, but I'm just going off of my nose and what differences I pick up on. So I should mention that this bottle here is about six years old, right? So it's about six or seven years old. And it's been less than 50% full for the entire time because I wore it quite a bit when I first acquired it. And then I didn't wear it as much. You can also kind of see that the liquid in the 2011 version is a little bit darker than the one that came out in 2020. And it opens up with this beautiful irisy vanilla, right? So it has this sharp, resinous vanilla. It's very glowing, very decadent. It's very sweet. It's gourmand leaning. And I personally love it. I am getting that pear thing that's going on in here. And I've tried a lot of fragrances. Like there's a woman's Jimmy Choo fragrance that was composed by Olivier Polge. That one also has a lot of pear in it. And I can pick up on the pear ingredient that's used in this one as well. The lavender is also quite noticeable in this as well. So this is a very transparent fragrance in terms of the note breakdown. So when you take a look at the note breakdown, you see the vanilla and the pear, the ambrette, the lavender, the iris, and you get all of that in here. 
And I definitely appreciate the sweetness of this fragrance. Now, if you fast forward to the 2020 version, in the 2020 version, you get a lot of that iris right away. And you get the iris and you have the pear and it comes across smelling very fresh and it has that fruity nuance going on about it as well. But I'm not getting the richness of the vanilla that I do in my original. Now, if you smell them in the air, they're gonna smell the same, honestly. In terms of the differentiation, especially if you're purchasing a new batch of, the, of this version or a relatively newer batch and not one that came out in 2011 or 2012 or something, you're probably going to get a very similar smell. And from what I've been told, the 2020 version, while it is repackaged, a lot of the batches are batches that are also found in the pre-new packaging version of Dior Homme Intense. So I think that that in and of itself kind of says that they are using the same formula. There hasn't really been any sort of a reformulation going on there. But these two test strips do smell very different. Now, I think a lot of that also has to do with the fact that I've had this in my possession now for about six or seven years, and the oxygen is what contributes to the progression of the maceration and maturation of the fragrance. And in this one, because there's so much oxygen in the bottle, this has been left to macerate so it gets stronger and stronger, and the more volatile ingredients die out, whereas the more... Um, uh, the ingredients that have a larger molecular structure stick behind. And that's exactly what's going on in here. Now, this is fresh. I purchased this one a few months ago, I think back in February or January or something like that. I don't remember the exact month, but I've had this in my possession for a few months. And as you can tell, I've worn a little bit of it, but not a whole lot. So it's still full quite a bit. And so this one is a little bit on the fresher side. I definitely pick up on the iris and the pear. And there is an underlying sweetness in here, but is it as sweet as the original? No, it's not. Now, here's the big question. Do I think that that lack of sweetness is on account of a reformulation? I don't think so. I think this is just the nature of things, you know, and I think this is one of the reasons why so often people are led to believe or they become skeptical of the fact that a newer fragrance has been reformulated. If you have a bottle in your collection or in your possession for several years and it looks the way that mine does and you've been wearing it nonstop year after year after year, but not enough to completely deplete the whole thing, now it's been macerating for such a long time and the formula itself has gotten stronger. So when you go out and you buy a freshly compounded batch, you're going to get a fragrance that perhaps is not as strong as the one that you've been nursing for the past five or six years. So I would say don't necessarily be leery of any reformulations, especially not in the case of this fragrance. I'm not saying that it hasn't been reformulated. What I am saying is that if you do buy the 2020 version, if you're smelling it in the air, you are going to get a product that is 90 to 95% similar to the 2011 version. Uh, however, I do get that vanilla richness in this one much more strongly with the resins than I do in this fragrance but I'm very happy to revisit the two maybe in a couple years from now and let you know if I find that this one has become strong in comparison to the way that I'm perceiving it right now but all in all you're going to get a formula and I mentioned this before it does conjure up the same memories for me and so it's not like it seems so reformulated like the original Dior um that came out in 2020 that one is completely different to the original which has the iris in it, that's not the case here. You are still going to get the iris, you are still going to get the lavender and the pear and the vanilla and the resins. I just find that my 2011 bottle, which was not purchased in 2011, is a little bit sweeter, but I think that's on account of maceration. So there you have it. I tried to compare these as best as I possibly could in terms of what I'm getting from the smell. I don't have a long list or an archive of batch codes that I can give you and other people's commentary on what they perceive the nuances and the changes to have been from one batch to the other. I do agree that that information would probably be very, very helpful, but I have 2,000 fragrances in my collection. And if I tried to do that with 2,000 fragrances, that means I'm smelling 2,000 fragrances hundreds of times, which is 
I have a day job, right? That's a little bit overwhelming for me. So I'll leave that up to somebody else. But thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you took something of value from this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, while you're at it, please make sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell. It would mean a whole lot to me. Thanks again for watching. I love you all and we'll see you next time.